welcome. 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 All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of The Reach Around. Uh, my name is Cole Jackson. And I'm sitting here with my, my best buds, and we decided to do a podcast, and we're going to have some fun, do some talking. It's going to be great. Some Yeah, some licking, fun time. licking rocking. Uh, I make films, and I study political science, so that's me. Uh, to my right here is Tristan Willard. He's one of my best pals. Tristan, tell the people about yourself. Hey, guys. Uh, my name's Tristan, obviously. I just finished my... Uh, Junior year at North Texas. Uh, I play the tuba. That's, you know, I play the tuba in the marching band. That's my thing. Nice. Hopefully do it for a living, maybe. Nice. We'll see. Teaching the kids. Yeah. Teaching we'll see. the kids. The children and then, are And then Mr. Mr. Emmett. It's across from you, Mr. Emmett Crabtree, across from Tristan. Hey there. My name is Emmett. I, uh, I work in the beer industry. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not super interesting. Um, That's a lie. I have a I have a lot to say about a little and a little to say about a lot. So I'm just uh, I'm here to have a good time. Fair enough. To his right, to his left, I don't really know directions. What it's, is it? It's my. It's his. It's his right. It's his right. Uh, it's my Kieran name, Gibbs. My name is Kieran Gibbs. I am a junior at the University of North Texas. I am the only person in the United States with triple citizenship. I live in the United. <laughs> okay. I am a. Registered in the United States, uh, Guatemala, and uh, the Kiss Army. Uh, not really. Just effervescent. John Simmons power. But I, I, I used to live in a crappy little town in North Texas with... Uh, we all lived with, in that town. We all lived in that town. It was but, terrible. But at the moment... Don't ever go there. But uh, at the current jun- at this current juncture... They're the only people watching this. You notice everybody else <laughs> intro except me. There's my one F word. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I live in the moment, and I like trains. I like trains. All right. Very well. Okay. Well, each episode, we're going to start with some segments. Uh, The first segment we're going to talk about this week is entertainment. It's going to cover a wide variety of things. Entertainment. Uh, So, do y'all want to do upcoming movies first, or do y'all want to talk about Deadpool a little bit? Uh, uh, That's a good question. Deadpool's fresh in our minds. Let's talk about Deadpool. Okay. Uh, How about some spoiler-free at the first, and then maybe we can do like we a, can try to work blue a little later. Work, yeah, work blue. Yeah. I like sounds, it. Work blue that sounds good. So, uh, mm-hmm. just straight up one out of ten. What's everybody give it? I'm gonna give a solid eight. See, I'm gonna say a seven. Honestly, Ooh. I feel like it was a good film. <clears throat> Cole, I think it's a seven. I mean, the first one was eight ish, but this one, this one, I don't know. It was different, different vibe, different vibe. Right, this film. right. Uh, the first one is funnier and more. I feel like there's not like enough like a lot of pressure on it you know what I'm saying because they didn't have a huge budget and there wasn't like a big scale of things but this one had like a bigger scale I feel like this one's the better movie though what was um, your rating there Kieran I'm gonna be the uh, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the uh, difficult douchebag and say it was about a 7.8 because cool. it wasn't quite an 8 because I get the first one probably a 9 just because of one the accuracy to the really spirit of the comics yeah, you're because right. I've been reading uh, Deadpool probably since 8th grade and That's I've fair. always loved what he's been about self-referential I've, humor self, I've, I'm a huge meta humor he always knew he was in a comic I'm a yeah. huge meta humor yeah. guy Yeah, and uh, I believe that it's kind of like the Guardians Guardians 2 thing for me because Guardians and Deadpool both succeeded in a realm of bringing a relatively obscure uh, yeah. property into the mainstream. Guardians more so than Deadpool, but Deadpool mm-hmm. was just more kind of like a cult thing. And uh, See, I feel like Deadpool... I feel like Deadpool... What, too- what the second one did really, really well is y- you kept that self-referential. Yeah. It knew it was yeah. in the movie. He, he referenced you know, multiple the style times. Continued. It was like, oh, here comes a good CGI battle. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. like that was... True to I mean, the the spirit of Deadpool, you had the uh, it, it was a recipe. It was a recipe for positivity because you had the same guy who directed the first John Wick. He co-directed. He wasn't credited, right? And uh, you had the same scriptwriters coming back, and they credited Ryan Reynolds. I'm not sure if that's because he co-wrote the script or if that's I think just that's because just how much he, improv he, he did. is the character. Yeah, yeah. he is dead. And there that's was a it. lot of improv. I, and, and I imagine while shooting, and he produced it. If uh, if it happens to win Best Comedy at the Golden <laughs> Globes this year, um, which it honestly kind of should, right? An actually right. like balls out funny movie comes yeah. out. Well, we'll see. Um, I mean, then he would have a Golden Globe for Best what, Comedy. What actual comedy actually wins a Golden Globe for comedy though? Like, um, I think right. the, I think the last like one the was usually Martian. Martian won a couple <laughs> years ago. And that was that has some of the most like grueling serious scenes yeah, in it. There's yeah. funny that, scenes in it. 
It beat it's... Trainwreck, which is an actual comedy. I mean, not a great movie, but Trainwreck. I, love, I, love I felt like Trainwreck I was a Trainwreck. Train wreck. I love <laughs> in my opinion, it's Amy Schumer's you sexist only good pricks. I just, I have never, yeah. You no. see, I think Amy Schumer's out of her element in that one, and I think uh, I, I don't mind that flick so much. I Anywho, she's, like within her element. Yeah. Any, any who's, I think she's not always just talking about a vagina. A vagina is about sixty percent of the movie, but there's some daddy issues in there too, which. I mean, Everybody hey, has. Let's yeah. yeah. Uh, we we mentioned Guardians of the Galaxy too early. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I feel I, I had one gripe with Guardians of the Galaxy, and it was that the second film felt like it was too small. It felt like it, you know, they're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, I mean that that ten minute group dance sequence didn't get you going. It just felt so. Uh, it felt limited. so limited yeah. in the scale of like its scope. Yeah. Um, because I, it's one of the. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Say no, that. you're good. Because you're uh, good. it's the prelude to Infinity War, you know, and it right, it, right, kind of cursed like that. And Which also, you, you have to bring in, uh, you have to bring in Nebula. You have to genuinely bring in all that. Kind of a um, set, kind of a segue right. into uh, Infinity War. Really, the movies you needed to watch were the Guardian series, Ragnarok, and maybe Black Panther and Civil War. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, I think I was making the comparison to Deadpool 2 and Guardians 2 because both of those succeeded in making a really non-normative property popular so there's only right. so many places right. you can go so it, you can either Bring try in. something different and piss a lot of people off or you can just do more of the same keep people satisfied and right. just get people their money's worth and they take the safe route you can't fault them for that but you know well, you always want them to take more risks Marvel Marvel they kind of have a Marvel Marvel my friend <laughs> They have a, a system for their oh, movies. They all feel system. very procedurally, you know, yeah. done. But they uh, they each kind of envelop their own spirit. Um, when you're watching a Captain America movie, you you are most in tune with Captain America. Even Civil War, Sans First Avenger. First Avenger. Uh, first first Avenger, Avenger was I. It was I. I feel like the First uh, Avenger. I, but it was that made me fall in love with. The Chris uh, Evans Captain America. That's Captain America is the best world. Marvel trilogy. I'm just gonna put it out there. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I love, I, I love the character yeah. of Captain America. I, I, all I, three I, movies together. I think that, I think that is I that think is that. the one people connect. I could connect with a lot. I feel like it, it uh, is in sync most with yeah. the wholesome, you know, I mean, American I, idea. Until Guardians, yeah. what we want. <laughs> Give Until it to we Guardians want three, and I'll get back. To yeah, you. yeah. You know, because Winter Soldier and Civil War are great, and then I mean. First Avenger, average movie, still a good movie, but like Guardians Two wasn't wasn't up to par. With yeah, I mean, Guardians One was so incredible to me. It's like my second favorite, and I well, think yeah, Guardians I agree. Three. And does that have particularly where in Infinity War? It's gonna be really f-ing cool. The only Sorry. thing that ever it's okay. the only thing that ever really messes with me about Guardians is I feel like every scene, every serious scene with Rocket, is just. So forced and so on the nose. He's a sad panda. It, it's, it's trash panda. Just, yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> I think um, I don't know try- why it has to be like, yeah, I'm sad because they did experiments on me. Well, because it just makes they're like, just trying to give you that backstory. You can't have characters say I'm yeah. sad. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, they're yeah. they're trying to give him death, but they're not investing in the death. Right. And that's, and it's that's, like you right. have to devote to that character if you're going to flesh him out, and, and they they can't. Yeah. Um, they, I think they did more in fleshing out Groot than they did with Rocket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Moving on though, since we kind of got a, got off of Deadpool. Deadpool's a good. It movie. was it was great. You go should see go it. see Deadpool. Go see, go see it. Go to see Deadpool. It's too. a family film. So see, this is why yeah. this film. is the reach around. This is why we can't have nice. <laughs> we things. just reach are around going the subject. To, uh, we got. We started. We're gonna hit a little bit of here. everything. Yeah. With <laughs> what we're doing. Well, let's kind of segue into like Infinity War now, since we're kind of on the Guardians. Sounds good. Anyways, it's the it's. Yeah, spoilers. Three weeks. Sorry, Emmett. Emmett hasn't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. I'm terrible. Three weeks, bud. You're but right. but I mean, I know most of what happens because what do you I know have what happens? been Let's start on the with internet. You. you can start talking. Well, spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah, if anyone listening, you're gonna know what happens in, in Infinity War. Three. Um, all five two, people listening are gonna know what happens in Infinity War. One. So basically, I I know the climax of the film. I, I understand the you climax. Know, like, the best part. Uh, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. <laughs> and then everyone other Thank than you, the main media. Avengers just disintegrates. Yeah. Um, because Thanos got the all the power Avengers. gems. And Groot. 
and Nebula. Ah, oh, are they still good? They still good. Oh, I like that Groot's still there. No, no, not Groot. No, not Groot. Rocket. That, Rocket. 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 Groot died. Not dare because you. Groot's last word. See, that word. made me sad. They Groot's, had to pull at your heart. It's so sad because Groot's last word. You hear him say, "I am Groot," when he's fading away. Yeah. And James, James and James Gunn. Gunn came out and said that his last words were dad when he's looking at rocket yeah. oh that's sad that's really sad that's real sad but anyway all right well and first Groot is dead that's now that Groot my heart's been one. ripped out <laughs> because i thought Groot survived but see james, i think james gunn has a habit of ripping that climax heart i know out. uh in the scope of the film it's got to be great and when you see it all for me great score by the way dude. i think <sighs> it's it's kind of a cop-out because you already you already know everything's going to be fine because well, yeah. that's what I wanted to touch on too. Because right, they have the... people are like all emotional yeah. on social media. It's like well, you know, Spider Man's going to be back. These you know, people already have sequels planned. You know, T'Challa's you know? going to be back. And that was one of the things going in. Me and Cole talked just about this a little bit. No going, one special going into can it. die. We were like, okay, we've got the Spider Man movie yeah. coming out. Like they're not going. And we were talking about characters that could die. We we're like, yeah, Iron Man's kind of well, done. You know, maybe he could just be done. Captain America, yeah, another one. I, see, and then they did the opposite. I, you know, I think, and Black Panther, who just came out. There's right. another sequel. I, I think they're doing this because I went and saw it we, for the first time. Me and Cole went and saw it at one in the morning after the NFL draft. It was it was incredible. Um, we were sitting in there, and I was kind of mad because it was like I think they uh, bitched out a little bit when because I thought we could have had that uh, that iconic Iron Man death, or maybe we have the bloody shield on the tray from the Civil War comic. You could implement that visual into the Infinity War, but no, I feel like it's a big grand setup to a big payoff in Infinity War uh, Two or Avengers Part Four two. because I it's think... ultimately a swan song for the core Avengers. One of the yeah. One of the biggest moments is in Avengers is when you're going to see Pepper Potts get, you know, the folded flag and she's just going to drop down to her knees and start crying. Can you even get a flag, though? I, I doubt it. it. I mean, he's not <laughs> in the military, obviously. But, you know. The world should give him something. Think, he he has assisted BBS. through... through uh, World Annihilation. Yeah, BBS, exactly. A couple of times. Superman a flag. I think they made a black Superman Well, this is in D.C., yeah, I know. I'm DC just saying. is gross. I'm just everything, saying. <laughs> everything is black and dreary in the DC universe. I'm just saying when they kill Superman, they Including don't give them an the American future. flag. Right. You know? It's kind of cheap. Right. It's kind of cheap. You know? Oh man! But I, I do think they they ha- they they do something like this and in such a dramatic way, mm. and especially I think they really had to go for like Black Panther, who everyone right. just fell in love with this just a couple months ago. Yeah. God, how they take they take away it's someone already. like that. And that really is like, people are like, what the hell? You're wondering how they're going to come back. And then you know in a year. You know he's going to be They're going to break all the records yeah. they just broke in pre-sales. Because everyone wants else. to see how they fix this. Because And they are. And it's going to be a beautiful right. movie. I have no we, doubt We all know it. the eventuality of it. We just want to know how they get there. Yeah. Because everyone's kind of lost right now. Something I can see happening. Um, just a bit of a comic trivia yeah. for you. There is a... Captain Marvel... That too. Uh, actually, in the, ori- in the original comics in the Infinity War, it's actually Adam Warlock who beats him. Who Truth. They, who they teased in a volume two. Truth. But I think it would be a cool thing to make a nice callback to the original Iron Man comics because he's the only one left. And that is going to tear Tony Stark the hell up next movie. And I think we're going to see him. And it's going to like do a callback. It was a storyline called uh, Devil in a Bottle. And it's where uh, Tony Stark has real issues with his alcoholism. And that's where War Machine becomes prevalent. That's how Sam... Not Sam Wilson. Uh... Rhodey. That's how he gets the War Machine armor when uh, yeah, yeah. Tony Stark has inner battles with himself. And I think we're going to have that nice visual of just the darkened Stark Industries building with the mil- not millions, like hundreds of whiskey bottles. And he's just in his bathrobe with his head down. And then like uh, Cap comes in like, we have to do something. And then Captain Marvel can bust in from the sky and we go into the movie. He's got to get back to I think one her. thing that they have done very well is setting up the emotional state of Tony Stark. They have shown that he is very... Uh, very a, conflict- especially with Spider-Man. He's conflicted with the danger he has brought into the world. He's conflicted with what what the superheroes have done. Yeah. Um, he and, can, yeah. He puts the whole world on his shoulders. And, yeah. And one of the, be- the best... Which is kind of a Captain America quality, yeah. but you see it in Tony Stark. One of the best parts of the movie, I think, is, you know, Tony at the very beginning of the movie, what is he talking about? I don't know. Talking- oh, you don't know, obviously. But <laughs> he's talking about how he wants to have a baby, right? Yeah. He wants uh, He wants a kid. He's at that point in his life, he's like, I don't care about being a superhero. Yeah, I like it, it's kind of cool, but, that's but like, I want a kid, you know? That's also the best, that's really good writing on oh. Joe Russo's, on, on, what the f- is his 
think. They did Marcus McFreely? I have no idea. Who whatever whatever the guy's name is, that was really good. When there's the nano thing on his chest, it's like, yeah. if you wanted kids, you wouldn't have had that. Yeah. And it's just the doc for his suit. No. But then you go you go to the end of the movie, and then his connection with Spider-Man. Yep. And then you... Know, it's the son he doesn't and, have. Yeah. You know, it's he's... He acts like he doesn't want him in his life. The, the but, genius. Yeah. It, but it's he wants everything it. Tony wants. In That's all he wants. Yep. That's all he wants. He wants to teach him how to play baseball. <laughs> Just throw around the old Yeah. Ball. I don't yeah. even know if Tony Stark knows how to play baseball. On the top of... He does. He'll figure it out. He has to. The, sh- the suit will Captain America could teach him. <laughs> He's old enough. He's like 100 years grandpa. old. Grandpa. <laughs> what? Great grandpa. <laughs> I really hope... <laughs> I'm really excited because I think you're... It's going to call back a lot to the first Avengers movie in yeah. the next one because gonna you're going to past that desire of just a team to work together that's right. Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, and Hulk. They got the band together. Yeah. They got the band yeah. together. OG bands back together and then we're going to have that big payoff because you know it's like wrestling logic. I'm sorry if anybody you're gets cool. offended by that. You got to have <laughs> so in offended. order to have WrestleMania 30, Daniel Bryan, WrestleMania, you have to have WrestleMania 28. Where Seamus kicks him and beats him for the title in 28 seconds. and You, you gotta also, have the setup. You gotta have the heel go over, and in this case, Thanos. And this is why I'm kind of making a whole lot of parallels to Infinity War and The Empire Strikes Back. I think Infinity War is basically The Empire Strikes Back of the 21st century. Because it's so the far. movie where yeah. the bad guy wins, you have you have dead air for a whole Absolutely. year, mm-hmm. and you just gotta wait. You just wait. gotta stew in it. You mm-hmm. just gotta think, like, the bad guy won. Yep. Wait to see what happens. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And in and a couple I, months, you know, conspiracy theories are going, Thanos but... Thanos is the Mad Titan. The father. <laughs> we actually... We need to transition to a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, Solo is coming out. Oh. Everybody's going to see Ooh. it. New Star Wars so, movie. Can't wait. Lots can't of wait. turmoil on set. How do y'all think this movie's going to turn out? It's going to be fine. I feel uh, like, from what I've heard, uh, Lando Calrissian, the uh, incredible Donald Glover, steals the show. Childish Gambino. Um, honestly, how could that man not steal the show? Everything he does turns to gold. Um, I, 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 I think he's going to win it. Like, for us. I think he's going to win us over. He, he's just incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I think... Honestly, his role in that has me most excited to see the movie. Well, the, um, the second I heard he was going to be Lando, exactly. I was like, uh, and bought, the, I got my yeah. ticket. And Lando's yeah. a character that we we don't have a lot of backstory. We don't have depth. Yeah, he's just kind of there. We know him and Han are friends. Yeah. They actually have said that there might be a solo Lando movie after they, this movie. Lando they said Solo. He, they said Alden, what's his last name? I have no idea. It's Alden something. I, I don't know how to Alden pronounce Snow. it, but I don't want to offend anybody. Um, young Han Solo, let's just call him that. A young Han Solo, he signed on for three. Ah. And, but that's not necessarily a solo deal. He right. could just make an appearance in like the, the Obi Wan yeah. yeah. prequel or something. Yeah, they're definitely going to expand on it. But I really, and I'm they, curious to see how they derail from just the Star Wars movies. Um, I'm really excited that they're going with. I don't the think they're going to derail all that much. Well, well, it's not derailing, but just making you, this you've other seen, series. Uh, they have uh, the creators of uh, Game of Thrones have signed on to make three yeah. Star Wars films. I think that's going to be Old Republic. Though. Exactly. But, but what I'm saying that's is they want to expand the universe. Yeah. They yeah. don't... Showing you other sides every, of the Every of the film universe. we've seen in the main... Backstories. It's, I guess it's like a non elegy you know, now. Um, all of those are about this, like, the Skywalker lineage or the the story playing out at the center of the universe. It's not the extended universe. And what I think we're going to see with these other trilogies that have been announced is you're going to see more of that universe. You're going to see the depth that Star Wars has to offer. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. How long until we get like 60 years down the line when we're running out of stuff or we're actually going to run out of stuff because yeah. it's Star Wars? Yeah. And we get the spotlight like news movie about the uh, – Independent contractors that were on the uh, space that were on the new Death Star that got blown up during construction. You take that idea from Kevin Smith and make it like I think uh, exposure whistleblower. Like they killed innocent people. Their story. That kind of thing. Will Where's be the told? Justice Mon Mothra? <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get there. To be honest. I don't know if I want to get there. Very unlikely. I'm gonna write it. I think in the end, you always, uh, you know, the the victor writes the history. So true. You know, I I assume the good guys win. Yeah. Never really know, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I think it's exciting with with the Republic or the you know the Rebels writing the history. You won't see much. Uh, you won't see much of the. I'm really interested to see how long it goes because they could have they, the where they're setting it up with going into like the old Republic in these individual movies like Solo. Man, this could be another. This could be a dynasty. Yep. Yeah. Who knows how how many movies they could make? Futures and how many TV shows they could make? You, you don't. That's know. That's the cool thing about 
fandoms and and material you can continually recycle old narratives and create new ones but star wars is really untapped though i understand the, yeah, they've really hinted so at much stuff canon that but you can why they really haven't they dove into have it. they have expanded yeah you know, the universe through their their games um the game that i was a big fan of uh star wars uh of the galaxies Galaxy. Yes. It, it was is that a phone game? Uh, no, a massively multiplayer online role playing game. Um, is that canon? You f- yes. pleb. Um, <laughs> All right, that's three. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids, kids can't watch this show apparently. Uh, but it, it bleep on it. We are NC seventeen now. In the vein of like World of Warcraft and things like that, there was just a massive world mm-hmm. that you know there were tens of thousands of players online at any given time and. There were 40 planets, probably, that you could visit. Yeah. All of those planets exist in that universe. All of those planets are, are something that we could explore. Absolutely. Cool. As, uh, as well, since we're on right. game topics now, y'all have any like video games y'all want to talk about or anything uh, like that? Anything I want to mention a game I got to play today with my friend... Uh, Dugan, he lives little down, indie he, game moment. He lives down the indie street. He looks not the indie street. Um, he lives down the uh, <laughs> street, street, and he looks like Jesus. It's fun. There's this indie game. It's called Crawl, and it's yeah. on the on Wik- Wikipedia page is giving me because I just played it in his living room. It was awesome. It came out in April of last year, and I haven't like heard of it. I haven't seen it on many forums. Um, it's uh, on Microsoft Windows, Mac, Linux, PlayStation Four, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. So everything. Let's say yeah, it is a. Uh, it's a brawler uh, arcade game. Kind of a dungeon crawl, it sounds a, like, which makes sense given the name. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a dungeon crawl, and it's def- you can play single player, but it's really fun party game. Cool. It's um, got strong foreshadowing. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you either are a human or you're a dungeon monster, and you start. Ooh. And one part of the party starts out as a dungeon monster, and the other part starts out as a, a human. That's cool. And dynamic. when one kills the other, you switch roles, and you act, you steadily gain XP, you and you uh, upgrade your weapons, and you also upgrade the uh, status of the monsters. If you spend a lot of time as the monsters, and you can make them more powerful and have different attacks, it's See, really. I've played games like that before, but generally, when you are the monster, you stay as the monster. I think the coolest thing that you just said was that. When you kill the monster, mm-hmm. switch. you switch roles. No, it's incre- It's really fun it, because... That sounds great. Because there's this like almost strategy role when you're dead. Right, Because right. you don't immediately become the monster. You become this ghost. Oh, and you okay. look for a... And you have to go through the dungeon with them and find these different little pentagram circles on the ground. Mm-hmm. And then you spawn into one of three monsters that you upgrade. It's really, really surprisingly... That's cool. It's really a uh, immersive... I'll have to look into deep. that. That and sounds it, uh, That sounds really cool. It, it was really fun. It's by these guys called Power Hoof. Uh, do you have any games you wanted to talk about? Last point, Emmett. I am incredibly interested. I, I've heard at E3 this year, it's very possible they're going to announce Borderlands 3. Mm. And Borderlands, for me... Uh, Sounds very interesting. One of the best lines of games I've ever played in my entire life. Me and my brother, side by side, split screen, played through every single game in that series, and I look forward to doing the same with Borderlands 3. Uh, That would be fun. Just incredible gameplay. If you haven't played Borderlands, you're really missing out. Yeah. Awesome. We need to move on. Absolutely. So, guys... A couple weeks ago, we got to go to probably the coolest event I've been to. It was know, amazing. And maybe in my life. Like, yeah. that was an awesome experience. Just like the events that transpired for us to actually get in the draft was absolutely... Emmett, you want to give us a little rundown of, like, what happened that day? Okay, Just so a quick basically, little... uh, we had decided... This is incriminating. Outside, outside the draft, um, <laughs> there was... Uh, a little fan fest taking place at the Cowboys Stadium. So we were just going to go and hang out at this little fan fest, you know, have some fun, watch the draft on the, uh, big, screen the outside. big screens outside. At um, AT&T Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Next to Troy At and AT&T just, Stadium. Just get in, trashed in off Arlington. $9 beers. <laughs> it was going to be great. Um, and we're just standing around at, uh, at one of the big screens, and this guy walks up to us and says, hey, you guys want to get in? And we're like, I mean, yeah, that, that sounds yeah, pretty dude. great. Kieran's off getting food at the time. I am dude. fetching brisket sandwiches. Kieran <laughs> had left to get a brisket sandwich for himself and I believe Tristan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this guy $5. hands us three <laughs> tickets. Three tickets. There's four of us, mind you. Um, and so we, we kind of get well, into the mode where it's like, how do we find another ticket? It's a precursor to that. To get in, you had to enter the lottery system. None of us got picked. None of us. So you had to get – when you None got to the – <laughs> You got to the event – 
And you had to basically enroll yourself into the the running list of if they had a room available. We were they nine thousand people closest, and behind. 9, the line. So we had no real chance of getting in there at all. We yeah, had no. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was. We gave up because actually we did get in at the end. I got the message it was like, <laughs> at like eleven thirty. Yeah. yeah, it was like at, the, after the Cowboys pick, pick. twenty. I think yeah, twenty eighth pick or um, something like that. So basically, this guy hands us three tickets to get in the door to the draft, and at that point, we're like. Oh, we we have a, a conundrum because there's three of us and four there, there's, there's four three of tickets. us and three tickets. Yeah. And so basically I uh set off on a little side quest of my own to find another ticket. Uh I gain one by unscrupulous means um that will not be talked about <laughs> on live radio. Um live and in I'll give you a hint but, we didn't record this because of the cold sore. <laughs> <laughs> but we all got into the draft, which ended up being just incredible. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. The view um, oh from God. inside oh. on that second tier little balcony. See, I had a different view. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> Cole had a different experience. I was, on the, I was on the top floor above the suite. The 4,000 level. Cole took a bullet for the rest of the team. <laughs> <laughs> it was still a pretty nice view. Right. I couldn't hear a single thing Michael Irvin or that lady said. I don't think you needed to. And it was, it was pretty forgettable. Yeah. yeah. Just a side note: um, if you like followed any major sports blogs uh, or sports like networks, you'll notice that on the first pick of the draft, since it was in Dallas, you could not hear Roger Goodell talk because of the boo. Because we booed. We were a booed. part of that. He was booed so I loud. I still have those Snapchats. Live. Please. That you could not hear the commissioner speak. He would say, you couldn't hear anything. You're gonna in that boo building. these Dallas Cowboys greats, and then they they'd be like cheer for them, and then he'd start talking again. They boo. <laughs> Fantastic, me. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Jason Witten approached, and it immediately went from Ooh. before the announcement of Jason Ooh. Witten's retirement, yeah. which is crazy, happened the next day. Um, but so speaking of draft, we want to get into what does everybody think? What what do each of us think is the best pick? Out of this draft, and do we want to go first round or do let's, we want to go? Let's do first round draft? first, and if you, anybody round? else has another, I mean, opinion. If honestly, we have... both of mine are in the first round. Okay. Cool, cool. Let's let's talk first round. Um, all right, Tristan, what do you think is the best pick out of the first round of this draft? Ooh. You know, I'm going to give you two. Okay. Because the rest of my best picks of the draft didn't gotcha. come in the first round. Okay. Um, but for me, first first pick, it's got to be Quentin Nelson. Okay, I can see Cause that. Because Indianapolis yeah. trading back with the Jets mm-hmm. a couple months ago, you didn't know really how this – we knew the quarterback scenarios are going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Jets they trade better. back two spots, and you know they got a ton of calls at that mm-hmm. spot. But they got the absolute best player in oh, the draft. And they, they got the guy they wanted. They wanted him. Because you, uh, pro- you got to protect, hopefully, Andrew Luck. Hopefully. He well, ho- let's see. He's supposed oh, to start man. throwing pretty soon. Yeah. Even, even so, Jacoby Brissett got a mini cannon. That's true. I'm just saying they've I, got they got a manageable if, quarterback. If but, does not come back, Brissett could do really well with a little bit of protection. But, but Quentin Nelson, he, he, he is the starting point he of that. Fits everything that team needed. Yeah. Cole, you yeah. said something. I was just gonna say that if Andrew Luck comes back, that's like 50 points of the fantasy. Oh, game. absolutely. Yeah. So no matter what, my my second that guy one could be a steal. My second one, it was actually not a rookie. Cool. So, Ooh. my second best pick in the draft. Is Brandon Cooks huh. from the Los Angeles Rams, huh. who traded their pick Trade. to the Patriots? So they they decided that there was no one in the draft that they could at that spot because they were in the late twenties right. um, that they thought was better than what they could get for Brandon Cooks. It's a bold strategy. And happened. with how explosive their offense was already, I like your strategy there. They they did have to replace Sammy Watkins. Yeah. But well, Sammy was not as explosive in that offense. I think Brandon Cooks is I think, much more explosive. Has Sammy ever Sammy been really explosive? Sammy, every year, he was he supposed has to be. a few games where he's incredible, and the rest he is hampered. I mean, I he like had a couple 200-yard games yep. in Buffalo. Yep. He's Buffalo. A, yeah. he's, a, he's a great player when he's healthy, but he's not yeah. healthy. Yeah. Um, Cole, what about you? My best pick? Yeah. My best pick, uh, first round and overall, just in yeah. general, is uh, I think Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Chargers got a steal of Darren James. Absolutely. He fell so far. I thought the Cowboys were I thought get they him might jump up there and get him, yeah. 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 I think Dur- for just like price there. For what he's worth and, and they where didn't have they to do him. anything. They just Perfect sat there. fit in that defense, by the Great. way. They absolutely just sat there, and I feel like he's going to be. And he's basically all they needed good. in that defense. That defense. Chargers is just are a incredible. sneaky, yeah. sneaky team. Oh, I mean, they I, could be. I had their defense in fantasy for a little while last year. They were good year. last year. Before I picked up They're the Jaguars that Tristan had dropped. 
I know, but the talent this year. Let's I talk feel to like, Kieran. Right. Kieran, what's your uh, best pick? I think uh, just kind of maybe on. I kind of have two answers to this. I have. Let's hear your the Homer, best Homer answer first. <laughs> what's that? What's that supposed? <laughs> ah, sorry. What's that supposed no, to mean? A Homer is somebody that roots for their team. Oh, for. I'm not going to say Darnold. I'm a oh, Jets fan. Oh, come on. Fan. Darnold was a good Dar- pick. Darnold's a good pick, but he's three, not the man. best pick in the draft. I think the best pick the best was probably, I think Arizona stole. Uh, they did. They stole Josh Rosen. And they also stole Christian Kirk. <laughs> but I also... We'll get, that, those those we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I also think just kind of the biggest uh, troll pick was uh, Tampa Bay with Vita Vea. Ooh. They screwed a lot of people over. And I think I like there that. were so they many teams Washington that wanted Vita. No, I, and the you can, Cowboys wanted to slot him into the front, uh, the front of that D line. If Vita Vea was a couple yeah. spots later, if he made it past Washington, I which he wanted to, yeah. he wasn't I going feel to. Like but it was Vita Vea and then Vander Esch yeah. on their board. They said Vander Esch was their number two pick, like it, their number two. It on sounded the, board. the closer we got to the draft, the more they fell in love with Vita Vea. Yeah, yeah. And I think Tampa Bay knew how many teams right. loved Vita Vea. They knew if they dropped back any further, they weren't going to yeah. get him. Yeah, well, and it I wasn't going to make it past Redskins. I think they made a really wise pick there, and he's going to end up being really. Effective in the future. I hope. Good stuff. I hope he doesn't he's, turn up he, to another he, fucking year. He's so big. He's a big man. He's so big. He was the biggest man on that stage for yeah. sure. Emmett? All right. Best pick out of this draft. Um, well, I, I'm I'm gonna have to. I'm not gonna say one that anyone else has said yet. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead with Will Hernandez. Mm. Wasn't he a first round? Right at the top of the second. Was he? Se- to well, the Giants. Never mind then. Let's say. I mean, Darnold. He- Darnold was an incredible pick at number three. Mm. I think I mean, that guy. Great. I think you're just being nice, buddy. No, I think I would have gone Rosen there. Isn't he 19? You would have picked uh, Rosen over Darnold? Hell yeah! Every he's more pro ready. Interesting. But he's 19. We're but not. It was, he's, we're he's so about raw. pro ready. We're not thinking the Jets need a quarterback. Josh for McCown this year. was perfectly serviceable. If they have another butt year, what they I have think another is Darnold has all the ability take over halfway through the season. Very possible. But you're not asking him oh. to be pro ready. You're asking oh, him to be. But aren't they? They're I, not asking. Him. I don't think. I don't think they expect him I, to be ready. I think they are very much. I don't think they want to mess situation. this up. I think anybody expects him to be ready game one. I like, think obviously, but I feel like they expect him to be ready game Todd, one. Todd definitely doesn't think he's ready. Um, but uh, I think they're definitely playing this quarterback situation by Todd ear. Is. That's why they have Teddy Bridgewater. They That's have true. Bridgewater's and Josh a safety McCann. net. Bridgewater's sure. a weird sign to me. Do, because really if weird. the case they didn't get the guy they wanted. Um, All right. So, we've done our best picks. Do you all want to do worst picks? Let's do worst picks. Yeah. What, is, what do we think about first, that? Let's do first round worst picks. I want to go first because yeah. I went last last time. That's fine. Let's, just, let's reverse uh, let's, it. Yeah. Let's reverse the curse here. Um, <laughs> so... I think being at the draft when the Steelers took brother of Tremaine Edmonds, <laughs> Terrell Edmonds. First safety, first, or second safety off the, the board. In the first round, um, no one there knew who this guy was. <laughs> no. And I, I've heard, you know, since then that, you know, he, he was seen as a, maybe a second or third rounder. That's what um, most people Which had. is respectable, but I think... And they're at the in end the of the first, first round. There are so many things that the Steelers could have done there mm-hmm. um, to help them immediately. Um, maybe they had a bad draft. Maybe Terrell Edmonds. You know, it, maybe they saw something that everyone didn't. But I you didn't know, see that. And and I I hope that Perhaps hopefully they they found they found the good guy. Yeah. You know, I hope he's a good right. player. But There's I will also say players that Travis no Frederick. Where, he was a third round player almost every single person's board, and we traded back to the thirty second because we knew we could get him. Yep. We knew we could get the fifth year option. Yep. But no one they thought that was absolutely terrible. And now Fred Beard They gave is, us an F on yep. the first day of the draft. That's true. And look who Travis Fred he's the best center in the, in the NFL. Absolutely. So you never know. I I don't so want saying, it to pan out. You're saying grading <laughs> worst picks is a terrible idea. No, no, I'm just saying like yeah, they're, they're like the Patriots. Based on our present outlook, the, Patri- the Patriots right always take players earlier than they're supposed to go. So, who is so, your worst pick? Uh, it's, well, oh, yeah, we'll let Kieran go first. Let, I'll get yeah, to Kieran. We'll get to I think uh, I don't think it was the worst pick necessarily. I think they should have done with what they had way better, and that's the Cleveland Browns. Okay, um, I pick? think ba- if they just had the one pick, Baker Mayfield would have been fine. But they had one in four. I think. I, I mean, know you got the best corner in the draft, huh? They got the best corner in the draft, the but did they need the, the best corner? But they, they have nobody. Had, 
They could have had the best running back in the draft, and they could have had I still think probably have one of the best quarterbacks. Year. Huh? I still think they have a pretty bad year this year. Oh, because they're they the Browns. I think they win more it. than one game. I think they well, need a new fair. coach. That's not hard. Usually that's not hard to do. Usually. True. But we're talking about a team that has won one game in the past two years. Yeah, I feel like they win more than one game. They're 1-31, sure. right? There has been three yeah. Star Wars movies released since the Cleveland Browns <laughs> won a game at home. That is sad. That's real sad. All right, Cole? Uh, my worst pick is actually, goes back to the Vita Vey discussion, is right when Tampa Bay yeah. took Vita Vey. I agree with this one. The Washington Redskins, <laughs> oh. for whatever reason. Dicks in their hands. They... <laughs> They obviously wanted a defensive yep. tackle. That, they, they were we're not going to look at anybody this else. This is a reaction pick. Yeah, they were like, they were like, we want Vita Vey, and they were basically like betting yep. all their cards Vita Vey was there. Yeah. And then Vita Vey got taken, and everybody's like, oh my gosh, Tampa Bay just screwed the Redskins. Because they, they did. That was a so, need. That's a big need for them. What do they go now? Where, where do they go now? Derwin James? Maybe he was there. Great pick. Should have been it. <laughs> Should have been the pick. And uh, almost take, anybody, but I gotta this look pick. up the guy's name. I can't even. Jordan Allen. No, his name is Darren Payne. Oh, Jordan Duron. Allen was last year. Yeah, Deron yeah. Payne. Deron, Deron Payne. Deron Payne. I didn't good, even, good prospect. I didn't know who he, he was. He was rated low first round. Yeah, he was a second um, round. He pick. was a guy that they talked you know, about the Cowboys maybe looking into. But if we I trade do back. feel that was a reaction pick. It was. That wasn't a. It wasn't best available. Right. It was team need. Well, well you know what? I am perfectly fine. Need it was. We thought about this one position, and we're going to pick somebody in that position no yeah. matter who it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm perfectly fine with the Washington Redskins continuing to be the Washington Absolutely. Redskins. Absolutely. Because they're just... Dan Snyder. Win seven games doing a year. Dan Snyder things. Let's yeah, that was just some bad GM work in my... Oh. All right, now... We can go to Tristan. Tristan. You know, there's... there's I have four on my paper right cool. here. Cool. Um, Let's hear one. But yeah, Let's I'm not, not going to go through all of them. <laughs> It's got to be Colton Miller. Okay. Because how we just talked about the Redskins reactionary picking. Right. Mm-hmm. They did the exact same thing. Yeah. So the 49ers they, and the Raiders, they had a coin flip to decide ninth and 10th positioning. And the oh, John 49ers, Gruden. Oh, yeah, John Gruden. he lost that. Um, and the 49ers got a pick ahead of them. Yeah. And they took McGlinchey, which was the best tackle in the draft. Hey. Um and so I that's who they wanted. Yep. You know, because they go with Colton Miller, who he has all he's like six eight, tall guy, big guy. Honestly, half the time though, you don't want a tall guy. True. They don't always they work out. Him. But his tape was terrible. So this year was one of the years I've really dove into the draft. Right. And this prospect, yeah, he has he's one of those like Josh Allen type guys. Right. Mm-hmm. He could be amazing. Yeah. He's got all the ability. He's got the measurables. Yeah. But his tape, if you're going purely on tape, he would have been a third round pick. Ooh. He would not have been anywhere near the first round. That's pretty rough. So if you're, you're that's the first pick of John Gruden's career back at Oakland. Right. I I just don't think I think that's all right, the the first best tackle's gone, we're gonna take you the know, second. He's gonna it's Vegas here in <laughs> A couple years. Vegas, baby. Still if Oakland. he's still there. Marshall Lynch is still on the team. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. For this year, <laughs> yeah. who they say? I don't know if Marshawn Doug Lynch Martin. will yeah. be Doug on the Martin. team. The must game two. <laughs> you know, you hope he's not. He, he was fell very off bad. so hard last when he season. He retired for a year of bad. Back it was problems. they shouldn't have brought him back. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I thought using a last round pick on him was a waste. Yeah, it probably was. That's true. Let's uh, rotate out and let's talk about uh, Kieran. You don't have to talk about this, but we can talk about this. Kieran's a Jets fan. Jets. We're going to give him his time in just a second. Yeah, so yeah. like, let's just go around with our resident Cowboys fans here, me, Emmett, and Tristan. Let's grade the Cowboys draft. Emmett, we can start with you, and we can come this way towards me. I feel like, you know, every Cowboys fan wants to say that the Cowboys had the best draft overall, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm going to give the Cowboys an A. Um, I feel like there were... A lot of ways they could have messed up this draft. Mm-hmm. I feel a lot. a lot of what they did, they hit the needs that they had. Everybody wanted them to take a tight end. Yeah. Early. They wanted them to take Cortland a tight Sutton. end. Early, early. They wanted them to take Cortland Sutton. Well, They're well, like, you got rid of Dez. Why don't you some replace Dez? I was watching videos of Cortland Sutton the other day. Or Sutton, sorry, I don't even know how yeah. to pronounce his name. On the Broncos. And he looked pretty damn good. Hey, we all I'm look sure good in shorts. Great. Yeah, they I'm all sure look great, great in shorts. Before the draft, in case Keenan throws some balls. But what too. they are doing, what they are doing, is they are developing a different team than yeah, they had. I agree. They don't want a Des. And they I don't I, want. I, a, I want to point out, I didn't want 
Cortland Sutton. Absolutely. Before the draft. I just saw the video of him practicing the other right. day, and I was like, that that boy's got some talent. He was a high draft prospect. Like, he's another of those reason. guys. He's yeah. got the he's got the measurables. Mm-hmm. He really could be great in a couple years. Denver, not this what year. What routes does he run? He doesn't uh, run routes. He runs a go. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. you go. And he's not that fast. Yeah. He's a big guy, but he's, he's not that he's fast. He's Dez too. Right. Exactly. And, and Dez, when he was this younger, team was great didn't too. want a Dez. And yeah. that's exactly what I saw um, in the practice tape too. He just Deck jumped doesn't, up and caught it one Deck doesn't throw Dez balls. No, and doesn't. so this team didn't want a Dez. You ended up, you got Leighton Van Der Esch, which I think could be incredible for this team. He helps every position. Marinelli liked him because he reminded him of Erlacher. That's incredible. Erlacher's and it's great. And Going to the Hall of Fame this year, right? Yep. Yes. Um, you got Connor Williams. That allows the line to one be variable and two Get rid solidify. Of you solidify that line. <laughs> you help everybody. He should have um, made the plane right home. You got Gallup. That I guy is the quintessential possession receiver. That might be my favorite pick. And then the every other pick in that draft, if you look at it, yeah. it makes sense for the team. Yeah. Even even the guys in the seventh. I will you know? say this. The other day I saw they did you know how they take pictures of all the rookies in their uniforms <laughs> yeah. for like their first day? The Cowboys the each team gets sent two players and yeah. the Cowboys sent uh Gallup. Yeah. And they sent uh oh, surprised it wasn't Van Der Esch. No, they didn't send it Van was Der White. Esch, whoever number three is. The quarterback. The quarterback from Western Kentucky. Interesting. Yeah. They sent them to the rookie premiere day with like yeah. this is like Baker Mayfield and Saquon right. Barkley out there, and we have Gallup and if you, if you back see the photo, I will Sam say Arnold's the back. only defensive Sam player Donald's there player. was Bradley Chubb. Interesting. No defensive players usually go. But see, they didn't even put okay. Connor Williams in there though. They right. didn't. Which is weird. Well, he's a lineman. First round. I, I, it's more for the flashy guys. Yeah. So it's the position guys, guys. Are, the guys that are in skill positions. Yeah. But like, do we know this this quarterback's going to be flashy? We could have sent our other wide receiver. You know, I I have heard he was graded as a low second round pick by a lot of guys. Could have sent Bo. Um, I feel like he's going to be. I feel like he's um, going to be better than. T- I most think picks. though, you you look at a quarterback who was given a low second, high third round grade by a lot of scouts. That. You know where we got him. Uh, that's kind of flashy. Yeah. That says he can things. play. Yeah. If you want, we played him versus in uh, versus North Texas, and that oh, kid yeah? can play. He, wow. uh, I believe it was LSU. I think Western Kentucky went down there, and he can play. Yeah. Wow. Like so, we'll see. Yeah. You know, he's, he's one cool. of those developmental quarterbacks. Take a quarterback every year, and if Dak doesn't work out, yeah. you got somebody in the in the barn that can. Or help if you. Dak gets hurt, yeah, because you have to <laughs> with a running quarterback. One of the things you have to be prepared for. Is you know you got to be prepared. A lot for of injuries. people. A lot of people were mad we took a quarterback, but I'm yeah. not by I'm any not. means. Uh, any mean, means. Real you fast, solidify. Tristan. Give your grade. Absolutely. A plus. A plus. They hit. They hit every single need, and you can ask Emmett. I was. I'm super high on lineman. Period. Defensive and offensive. Um, Tristan and wanted a lineman in the first round. I would have been completely fine if they took a lineman in the first round. Yeah. And one of my favorite linemen in the draft was Connor Williams, who we got by just staying put. I thought he was going to be gone. Yeah, like he just fell right to Incredible. us. Incredible. We would have had a, in a real world. I feel like we would have had to trade up ten spots to get him because he was right there with Hernandez and Daniels, and in real world, our, in not <laughs> in not the real world, in not the twenty eighteen draft. That was yeah, a which weird was draft. it was a weird draft. It was shadow. But I feel like the Cowboys they really stayed put. We thought they were going to move around a lot with all the picks. Right. They really didn't. You know, we, and, we expected them to move up in the first. Yeah. And they just, everything fell down. down. They just took what was there, and I think they really lucked out. I think that speaks to the Will McClay draft strategy. Yeah. yeah. Which is... He's helped us a stay lot. Stay put. So has Steven. Work with what you got, and, you know, just make good picks. Yeah. And uh, they'll speak for themselves. Cole, yeah, love what, this is, what is your grade? My, my grade, we're running a little over, so That's I'm just cool. going to go flash. I kind of already talked about Gallup and stuff. My grade's probably around an A-, minus, and it's only an A-, minus because I feel like we took a lot of risks. Absolutely. But I feel like our risks are going to pay off, but Absolutely. it's just the point of, are they going to pay when off? When you see Jalen Smith running around without his brace, I saw him doing yeah. drills today without his brace. Incredible Yeah. that that man is playing right now. You put him, Sean Lee, and Van Der Esch on the field at the same time, that what? defense is scary. Yeah. yeah. All right. right. So we ran a little over, but I'm going to look here and I'm going to let you get your time. I want to ask you, I want you to grade the Jets draft and tell us how you feel about Sam Darnold. Okay. Uh, I think the Jets, I think we got a solid A minus um, because Sam Darnold was really cool and that was he awesome. He fell to y'all. That That's was awesome. That, and That's what they wanted to have. You know, the only, reason I'm, giving it. It the, the only reason I'm giving it the A minus is because uh, we gave up so much for that third spot because we wanted Baker. 
That's what we thought was going to happen, but we ended up with Darnold, and it turned out really well. That's, That's okay. Why I'm, I would have given it a B plus, but since we ended up with Darnold, I'm giving it the A minus. We beefed up on defense a little bit. We got a D tackle and a cornerback, and there's this kid we got in the sixth round. He is the uh, best uh, running back in D two. His name's Trenton Cannon, you know, and I think that guy he's a six rounder. Like if he works out, he doesn't. Hey, I'll pull for the the D two schools. It's Absolutely, like, I like small town schools. His, <laughs> name, his name's uh, Trenton Cannon, and he's the quote unquote best running back in Division like two. Yeah. And you know, all we have right now is uh, Bilal. Well, we have Crow, we have Crowell, Bilal, mm-hmm. and uh, if we we still we still have EJ McGuire for whatever reason. And Bilal then, uh, Powell. Is an incredible pass catching running back, and I think if you have him and Crowell on the field in a split back set, that is incredibly variable and could do great things. I don't, I don't think we have the offensive mind to do that. Though. That's possible. I think we're uh, that. That's also why we always pick defense if we don't. We got a quarterback, right. but we've right. gotten defense the past what four years before that. Yeah, yeah. we're a very defensive minded team, and over, and also I think Donald's gonna be fine. There are a lot of scary parallels I think he has with Mark Sanchez. You know, USC, <laughs> high interception rate, yada, yada, yada. I think but interception U- rate is something you can fix. Yeah, and I think it's going to be healthy to have him sit the you bench. Just, you got to teach him not to take so many risks. Yeah, you, just, you just bring him out there and you say, all right, Sam, don't throw to the other jerk. <laughs> don't be an idiot. <laughs> um, That's real- the main lesson Sam I'm, Darnold needs to learn. I'm incredible. This is the first time I'm going to say this. I'm incredibly excited for the preseason. Because awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to see Sam get Donald to watch get some your new guys. Mm-hmm. Well, I, where, wherever the hell Speaking I can see of Jets the preseason, games around here. we're gonna be at Cowboys game three of the preseason versus the Arizona Cardinals. That'll yes, be fun. Are. It's gonna be oh, awesome. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, cool. We're gonna With see Josh Rosen play. Yes, we, we need are. To transition into a different. Topic. All right. We're gonna go ahead and move on into uh, some fantasy football talk. We're all, fantasy. We're all in a fantasy football league. We take it very seriously. Very, uh, I don't. Seriously. Religion, <laughs> religion Kira is what some might say. would take it seriously if you took draft day seriously, but... Uh, no, I take draft day seriously. I just don't know how to do it. It doesn't right. show. Because I don't perform <laughs> well under pressure. No, I Because I'm like, maybe this guy will be good. I will say this, Kieran. I think you consistently are very good despite your draft. Yes. Yeah. You oh, overcome yeah. your draft. If I ever did decent drafts, I'd win this f- league. Every that's not year. speaking. That's not speaking. A, that's not speaking to a lot. What I like though is that your terrible picks at points, which I feel like most of the time you do pretty well, but you, you do have, better at the end of drafts. You have three or four rounds that you make. What kills you the is the first worst, rounds. The worst picks out of the draft. For a second, and I feel yeah, like both, those picks yeah. help the rest of us. And so thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not bad mathing you. I, I do you you had a very good season this year, Kieran. Despite I, picking Adrian Peterson in the second. Despite picking that Adrian was horrible. Peterson. Bad pick. Yeah. He was like fifty four on my I did get Travis Kelsey in the He was third. like eight rounds. That was your best there. pick. Yeah. Travis Kelsey was easily my best pick. Yeah, easily. Okay, well anyways, besides that, Emmett won. Cool, cool. Congratulations. Uh, yes, I did. We got three champs, three champs at the table. That's true. Kieran's the only one has won a championship. We gotta get this one day his trophy day will or come. not. <laughs> or one not. Day I'll take a second. He'll win one for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a trophy. His, his son will take on the mantle one day. It'll be <laughs> well, like let's get all in Batman. Let's get Hazen I'll do you right. <laughs> okay, well, anyways, let's uh, talk about some rookies to watch. Rookies. Yeah, who do you think is going to be like the best ro- standout fantasy football-wise? PPR, standard... Who do you think is going to be the rookie to take the most chance on in the draft? Okay. Or pickup wise. I feel like... Some people don't draft rookies at all. Everybody's going to be saying, you know, Barkley. Everybody wants Barkley in the first round. And I don't know if that's a great idea. One, I, I don't know if the Giants have the line to support And they bolstered Barkley. it a little bit this exactly. year. Exactly. But, but not enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like everybody's also thinking, you know, Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, you know, the high receivers. Mm-hmm. What you're going to see is the guys that do really, really well in the draft process, in the lead-up process, half the time don't look as well on the field. Yeah. And we saw that last year with uh, with Mike Williams. Mm-hmm. We saw that last yeah. year with uh, Corey Davis. You know, you didn't see that with Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju Smith-Schuster. Third I, round? No, I didn't draft him. I no, picked I'm him saying... Up. Was he a third round pick of the Steelers? Second round pick? Third round pick. Third round. I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Actual so draft, not our draft. What you want to look for is you want to look for those guys that fall into a good situation. Juju was in a good place yeah. because Martavis was, Bryant was an idiot. And he's also mooching off A B, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Even A B still got his. That's though. what I'm saying. 
you want to look for those guys that are in a good situation. And for that reason, I think Gallup is a pretty good pick. Yeah. Because he is a possession receiver and a possession offense. He could be a last round you know? guy, for sure. Exactly. I see your Gallup, and I raise you a Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk. Ooh. That's a good because, one. Because uh, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, is I, he might play until he's freaking 50. Um, but I think this is, is his last year. I think he's got two, Max. Yeah. I know, with Josh Rosen coming in and David Johnson maybe healthier. That's what I'm saying. Johns. That's what I'm saying. It depends on the Because coaching, a lot right? of people are going to put... You're going to put the pressure on Fitz. You're going to put the pressure on I just DJ don't know how much back. longer Fitz can do it physically. Yeah, I mean, and he's been proven... Uh, I think the biggest loss... It's a witness situation, too. Huh? The biggest loss to Larry Fitzgerald this offseason is Bruce Arians. Yeah. That's I can see that. But I think that you're also, a, you, know you also plan. have... Uh, Christian Kirk coming in and taking some of that pressure yep. off it, letting yep. him breathe a little bit, and people right. get on him. Kirk is interesting. Kirk is a shifty mother freaker, and he can just. <laughs> Kirk is interesting because he is variable enough to play on the outside or in the slot, and that's a big thing for that offense. Mm-hmm. That allows you to shift him around some. You can put David Johnson in the slot. You can mess around with, uh, you know, where you're lining up your receivers, and that that really messes with the defense because if you've got a guy that's lining up on Kirk. He, he doesn't necessarily know where he's going to be. Also, play. the offensive coordinator there now is Mr. Mike McCoy from the he was from he was a head coach at the Chargers. But is that and really before that, though? He was with he was with Peyton Manning in Denver. Because he's he's kind of like North Turner now though, like where North. he just brings in all his sons and it's like I'm an offensive genius, so I can just hire whoever. I mean, we'll I see. Want. He he did pretty good pretty good with Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas. Like who's who's and North Eric Turner? Oh, see now. So we'll see. Who's huh? North Turner? Oh, see now. Uh, was he in Tennessee? I don't know. I just remember them. They they hired him, and then like he instantly hired his son as like wide receivers oh, yeah. coach, yeah. It's like, which is dumb. I mean, yeah. that's the NFL coaching. Don't team. hire your like, children, people. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's bad what idea. Jeff Fisher did Jeff too. Fisher. It's everybody. They it's just a family. Like it's what Jerry Jones does. What freaking well, Al Davis does. He owns different. the team, though. Yeah, Al Davis Jr. the greatest <laughs> the greatest haircut in the history of the NFL. Yeah. All right. So those are some rookies to watch. Maybe possible pickups. Maybe draft picks. We don't know yet. You never we got know. A long way. August. Kiki cutie. August, man. Ooh. Uh, Gucci. Uh, so this is a question for the table. Still about fantasy football. Uh, a lot of times it comes at the start of the draft. It's like, what running back are you taking if you have the number one pick? What running back are you keeping if you had him the year before and you're able to keep him? Who is the RB one? Yeah. Standard or PPR, and that can you can give both. And yeah, that's a that's a thing you that, have to take. That's, that's yeah. we play PPR, so ask we, Gabby Levy on Bell for PPR or just standard or in general. Uh, all around, just because he gets points, he gets a lot of points. See, I don't think he runs numbers. enough. See, I think he Levy on Bell and PPR. That's a good pick. I might yeah, also throw one. out Kamara. Kamara is a pretty good pick as far as PPR goes. Um, which we know you're going to keep him, Krabs. One of our guys is probably going to keep him in the last round of the draft, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is incredible. So that's scary. Uh, I would say, I would say, if you're in a standard league, you want Ezekiel Elliott. That guy, he, he is going to get the carries. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's going to catch some passes as well, but the bulk of his offensive work comes on carries, and he's going to get the yards. Yeah, Tristan. I agree. You know, it's. It's a wild card, and we'll see. But I've really got to think because it would be Zeke for me, right? I I think he's the most complete back. Right. Standard and um, PPR. Um, PPR, I would probably le- lean towards Le'Veon Bell or David Johnson. See, that's that, a good one. Too. See, that's who I'm going with. Coming off an of injury, he's coming off an of injury. But such a disappointment to me last season. He was number one. See, pick. Emmett wants the first Imagine pick in the draft <laughs> so that he can just take who. No, he, he probably wants. felt pretty great because the Arizona Cardinals had a down season and they were trash. Yeah, he did not want to play they last. They were trash because he wasn't playing. Yeah, they were but, trash because their offensive line wasn't playing too. But if he returns to form, he is going to be a monster. That's true. And I think, I think he could have a breakout year. He could be nothing. You know, injury for running backs is really hard, especially and, ACL. I don't think he did. Do you do know his why? It was was it his not? Hand. It was his hand. Do you know why? I thought it was his leg too. No, no, no he broke his hand. Oh, it was his hand. hand. My bad. One of the reasons why I say Josh Rosen was the best pick of the draft is because of who else Arizona has over there. Now, that's Mr. Sam Bradford. I will say, and Mr. Sam Bradford can toss a football pretty adequately. He the one the knees though. I will say that die game one. The Arizona he, he line. Kind of, he just stopped playing last year. The Arizona line does scare me. 
Because it's not good. It's it's, not it's good. one of the worst worst but in the NFL. If you get him off on the screen, with a bad line. Yeah, if you get him what, off into the screen, what you exactly. don't want well, that's is for that team to rely on Josh Rosen. Yeah, because they're gonna they're gonna pound it. Relying on a rookie quarterback with a bad line yeah. is a bad situation. Bad RG3. It is a bad <laughs> situation. I, I think they're gonna use him. I, I hope he's effective, but we'll see. I mean, yeah, All right, I'm rooting for the guy. Move on. So let's get into general just... sports talk. Yeah. Um, so we basically, we're just going to have a little round table discussion, kind of, uh, everybody, I guess, throw out a topic uh, that you think is interesting. I got a bold prediction go for, uh, the NBA, you know, we're in the, uh, cool, cool. we're in the playoffs. LeBron so James. The, the, the other LeBron three guys here James. don't, don't typically follow basketball, but I follow it a little bit more. I think it's the worst sport. And I follow, I, I follow basketball. Well, I, I watch th- the playoffs. I don't think the Warriors are going to go to the finals. I think... Ooh, bold I th- prediction. I still think they come out on top. Dude, did you see Chris Paul make Steph Curry look like a At home. Punk? Yeah, but we'll see how Steph they do in Golden See, I think... Steph Curry is Chris a Chris Paul's never been man. in the conference finals. Yeah. So, and I think Chris Paul is going to step it up in the conference finals. And I, I just, think if James Harden can ride his hot streak... And what's another kid they got there that shoots all them threes? Uh, the whole team. Tucker is his name. Tucker. Oh, Tucker. Yeah, that's well, a Tucker. And if he had a great game if last he gets game hot, because if the Rockets can lay down the Warriors and chop that Giants head off, the Rockets got an NBA championship because they will decimate the Celtics or LeBron James. The this problem, is all Greek to me. Yeah, the problem. <laughs> that, now you know how I felt. The problem with the Rockets. <laughs> the problem I have with the Rockets, and I don't think Golden State is as good as team it's as the Rockets. Coach. To be honest with you. This season, but they're just too big of a monster. The problem with the Rockets is, for one, James Harden doesn't play defense. No, no. And no. I don't think Chris Paul can outlast Steph Curry because Steph Curry had a bad game, but he's still Steph Curry. It wasn't just yeah, him, but though. you also you, that supporting cast over there, just those no name guys who can kick it from the outside, kind of like Steph Curry used to be before he won the contest he and won, the, the, won the champion. I think it's going to go seven, and I think the Warriors are going to outlast them just based on depth. Ah, uh, I don't. I don't think. I think they're gonna crack. I think. The, I think it's, uh, it's possible. But there's also the possibility that this is the first finals without LeBron James in nine years. I mean, you never know. All like, right, Wicked Witch may be dead. So Emmett's uncomfortable. We've talked <laughs> basketball. <laughs> yes. Let's. You want to talk? Put on over to something else. To hockey. Baseball. Let's talk about hockey. Let's talk about hockey. hockey. All right. Hitler. Golden Knights. The Golden Knights. Okay. Let's talk Great about this. Story, by the way. So <laughs> a lot of teams. It's incredible. This is their first year in the NHL. If you did not know, they were an expansion team in Vegas. Um, and one thing with expansion teams, they have nobody on the roster. And a lot of times, they are absolutely terrible. You know, especially in the NFL, they had a rough you go out at the beginning. You generally see them <laughs> sitting <laughs> around the back of the power rankings. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. and it's expected. It's kind of like you got to work your way up through the rankings. Yeah, you're and the new kid on the block. The Knights, from the very first game against the Dallas Stars. Uh-huh. Um, have been incredible. <laughs> I don't feel so bad about that loss they anymore. Us. They destroyed us. And we um, were a decent team. We just fell off the map at the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. We, really Tyler, we Tyler lost Tyler Bishop Pitt and fell apart. How many Tyler games Pitt in a row did we lose? Eight. It was horrific. like the whole month of horrific. We, the end we of won two games in in, two, in one whole month. Scary. And we were like two yeah. in, two in our division. Yes. Yeah. At the time, we were on a hot streak. Biggest, literally the biggest collapse in hockey history. Yeah. Yeah. Not even joking. Um. So the Golden Knights, bad. though, and a lot of people say it's unfair because they were given because they didn't want Vegas to be a terrible team. Yeah. They needed interest. They needed the NHL to have another. Fan base. You see, they had an expansion draft, and you don't see that. Like that, that doesn't happen. Yes, it yeah. does. Every expansion you have, you have an expansion. Draft. No, I mean, like it doesn't happen where like they that successful. They get players that actually right. work together. Well, and that's like the Houston Texans, their first year. What expansion I think draft, that speaks to like is people. the level of high level talent available on some teams. It's true. Yeah. Who did they get from the Stars? Uh, from the Stars, uh, Eakin. Yeah, Cody Eakin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, that kid's big, good. That's a big yeah. hit to us. And, and you know, Neil, Neil and Flurry though, those guys together, that was a, that's great picks. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was mainly a cap, you know, cap, that's cap room. Um, but you know, and and they're set up for the long run too. Yeah, you know, if my dad, and they got good. Picks my dad's a draft. huge Dallas Stars fan, and he's like, you know, they just can't win it on principle. They can't win it the first year because there's I nowhere to go. To win. I, I want them. I want them. Well, I'm rooting for them. I think if you have an expansion team win, that makes a mockery of the whole. It's just like League. they came because in and did it like, so easily. Exactly, they just did it. They you just... know, maybe it needs to happen though. <sighs> Show the league that they're doing things the wrong way. We'll say that the only team that has won a Stanley Cup. I know that Cup, they skipped the Olympics this year, and that made a lot of people mad. That was a very dumb decision. Yeah, they should have let the kids play in the or the guy. They're men. Let them play in the Olympics. Yeah. Like, there's no reason not. Some to. of their kids, to me, well, there's a couple teenagers there making millions of dollars. It's insane. 
I know. Lowest I'm, paid sport, I believe. Speaking of teenagers <laughs> making millions of dollars, let's talk about baseball. Woo. Baseball. Baseball. So in my mother country, they say baseball. Baseball. Uh, One dangerous. of the biggest daggers in my heart this season oh God, is so uh, what? Oh, we're so we're bad. not that bad. We're, we're so just... bad. <laughs> um, we are disappointed. The Texas Rangers have a difficult thing in that they don't have pitching. You have a Cole Hamels who is broken. You have when you when your savior is Bartolo Colon. You know that that's. Rough. Surprisingly, and that dude good. has been incredible. Yeah. He's been great. He took a line drive but to the stomach the other day and just I laughed thought it off. that was so cool. He he reminds me of Andre the Giant. He was like he was like you. You look at him. I you look at this there. massive man. What I think is going to happen is you've got these few players on your team that are are veterans. They have veteran presence and they're playing okay. Um, you're going to see those guys get sold off closer to the trade deadline. You're going to see Bartolo probably when Beltre comes back. I assume they put him at DH, let him get his batting average up, and then sell him off. Well, yeah. Beltre I assume, said last year that he doesn't want to be a part of a rebuild. Absolutely. He wants his World Series. Which Cole is, Hamels. Okay. Cole Hamels, if he can make his ERA go under four, that guy gets sold. And you're not asking for top price for these no, guys. You're asking no. for whatever you can get for them. So because picks. Yeah, so, it comes comes there, yeah. We have a new season. We have a new uh, stadium opening 2020. Mm-hmm. And I know you're big on this. They yeah. want a team that is ready for that stadium. You have Leody Tavares, who is one of the top 50 prospects, and that dude's 19. Yeah. We need to he, do the full Houston Astros thing. We do. Um, I don't think we need to lose as, l- as long as they did. No, no. Um, that's definitely not the <laughs> optimal decision. Well, no. I'm saying I don't think we even need to. We don't need to 76ers it here. I think uh, you I, have a team that maybe this year and next year are bad, but the year after that, you have a lot of guys, young guys. You have Cole Reagans. You've got... You see, uh, I, s- I think we sell Profar, too. I don't know. I think we sell Andrews we instead. Do? I think we sell Andrews. Oh, end of an era, man. Sell man. Andrews, extend Profar. Profar is a shortstop. If you've seen him play shortstop, he's very good at it. Well, he's very good at every position, but like we just don't have room for everybody, you know? I know. That's why you sell Andrews. you got to make an investment put, in the future. You put Profar yeah. at his position. He's shown when he gets playing time, regular playing time, when he gets regular at-bats, he can hit. He can hit very well. The deciding factor might be their batting average come midseason. Yeah. Well... Anderson ain't playing right now. How is he doing? He's he's is not playing. Oh yeah, he got his. He, he's hurt. Yeah, for, he totally just started about throwing that. again. It's Profar um, playing shortstop Pro right Star's now. Been, Profar's been playing and he's been playing well and right. he's hitting. I saw that Joey Gallo like said he wasn't going to go back. He no, said he, he wants. To be he a said he doesn't. No, he wants to be a left fielder. Uh, yeah. The ESPN thing I said he'd rather be a catcher. Yeah, he, he, it was it was yeah, like Joey Gallo. You said he'd be a catcher? Yeah, he meant... Interesting. It was like... I think it was misinterpreted. It was like he wants to catch balls. But oh, just right, the headline. The catcher, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Um, did you see the sources on but that? But we've been That's putting him out in left field because Beltre's there, obviously. But they asked Joey him, Gallo, do you want to go to third base? He said no. He is a guy that is making his money on hitting home runs. Yeah. He's making his money on He's hitting amazing. balls far. Mm-hmm. And when teams are shifting against him... <laughs> Everybody's saying, "Hey, man, you need to just bunt. You know, just just do it for the team." And the whole thing is, if he bunts, he's not making his money. No, he's not getting that next big contract that he wants. Yeah. And so everybody's mad at future. him for not playing into the shift. He yeah. he's doing that for a reason, and it's because he knows his game, and he knows that if he does play into their game, he's lost. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. Uh, Let's move on to cool. uh, some... Terrence Williams. Ooh. T. Will. Yeah. So you got... Quick thoughts, Honestly, anybody? Yeah. Crashed his cares? Lamborghini. Just quick thoughts. Well, crashed yeah, his Lamborghini care. while drunk. Um, was... Well, some said that was misaccurate, though. Really? There were some reports saying that he wasn't in an accident. Well, well he just hit the light bulb and left. I mean, well, that he didn't hit another I, car. I've heard conflicting reports. We'll see. Interesting. If he hit it, then, yeah, that's worse. But most people, what I've read, it's just, it's been blown out of proportion. He was just drunk, public, intoxicated. Well, that's still bad. Yeah, I mean, it's bad for him because he's, I, I think it's saying, well, he might, I think I he's think playing for a spot. What the in Cowboys camp, and he could get don't cut. want is people on their team 
He's not a great receiver to begin being with. Being an idiot. They don't want... Yeah, you know, I mean, that's why they got rid of Josh Dez. Brent, a few years ago. Uh, you know, guy for this team, driving drunk. Yeah, they... Killed multiple people. Yeah. They don't want that. They don't want a story like that in the news again. You got a guy on your team, mm-hmm. driving drunk, gets caught doing it. When you're trying to change... We're, we're in a culture change. Exactly. You lose Dez and Tony and Witten in the past two years. Exactly. It's a culture You're change. You're trying to reestablish this culture that they want. Now, I will say, which personally, morally... Witten's probably the biggest loss to that. Yeah, but... Yeah, we lost that. He should... There. I He... Just based on playing ability, I don't know if he should be here anyways. I agree. He's, he's a great like... blocker. That's about it. He's a downfield blocker. I think he gets cut now for sure. But, I agree. But I will say... Depending on what happens. I want him to get cut. I, I would be perfectly as, fine. As far as morale goes, I know that losing Witten is going to hurt that because Jason Witten's the nicest guy on the mm-hmm. face of this planet, maybe second only to J.J. Watt. Oh. But uh, yeah, stand right. up I think dudes. Dak being there is helping a whole lot more. Because Dak is such just a team player. Dak Speaking is a leader. Yeah. And that's the thing you want from your quarterback. That's what they loved about him in the draft process. Yeah. Dak... Can take the people around him and make them better than they were. I will say the one thing that's really hindering them just cutting him now, you know, getting just saying, "All right, you did this stupid thing, you're done." Yeah. Just look this up. If they cut him today, dead cat would be seven seven million two hundred fifty thousand. Well, yeah, because we just gave him that contract a year ago. A year it ago. is a relatively team friendly contract, though. We have the cap. To cut it. We do. It, it just becomes automatically dead. Now, right. if you can get him till the end of this year, yeah. then it's only a $2.5 million right. dead, dead cap. So Which, that's much more friend. They right. built that in for a reason, but it's very heavy if, front-loaded. What if the pros outweigh the cons, it depends on trading camp, honestly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's still he's already in a battle. I feel like he's fighting for well, a spot. They brought in all these young guys, and I'm excited for it. People say that's our Dude, worst position. No, I'm like, who? let's see. You know, nobody's let's see what like, Dak does. Nobody's talking about him. I think Tavon Austin's going to be really good for y'all. Nobody's I don't talking know. about him. I don't know if they what use him. they expect him if to If they be. use him. Because Ryan Switzer came out and said recently that the Cowboys wanted him to be a running back, and he wasn't. And he, and that's why he, he felt got, that was out of his game. And yeah. so That's why they traded him. I feel him. like that's what they're trying to do with Tavon Austin. I, think I it's agree. not going to work Which out. shows they're trying to be creative. Right. They're trying to, you know, make a more variable offense, yeah. and mm-hmm. an offense that everyone's not expecting. But... When you're only using that player for two or three plays a game, is that really creating that much variability? Yeah. Yeah, they really have to use them. Yeah. And, you know, they, they are fighting es- for their jobs. You have to establish that early on. You have to believe they're fighting for their jobs this year. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I think... Last we- year, you know, coming after... Yeah. Jason Garrett just won Coach of the Year. If you don't go to the playoffs, Jason Garrett gets fired. He should. Well, for sure. Absolutely. I feel like we don't get out of the divisional round when Jason Garrett gets fired. We can win the wild card game, that. and I still think he gets fired. I could see that. Unless Jerry so, is just like out of his mind. I think we're running a little low on time here. Do you guys want to talk about the biggest elephant in every Dallas fan's room? What is Where it? the heck is Dez Bryant going? You know? Ooh. I have no idea. He's not Green Bay. Bay. I am surprised he has not signed yet. He has said he will not sign with Green Bay. I ha- oh, I'm not well, surprised. That, com- that completely messed up. I wouldn't either. Because I think it's <laughs> blatantly obvious he's, my, lost uh, a, he's lost a step, yeah. and he's an attitude problem. I think... And Teams they just got there, rid of, rid of Jordy Nelson. Have watched all or nothing. They know that this guy, he's immature. He, this is a thirty-year-old man. Yeah. If you, if you've watched all or nothing, you they, should. They but can't take criticism. Can I watch that tomorrow? Cannot yeah. take criticism. No. He has to have it his way, or it's just he, he can't has to function. constantly be built up. Mm-hmm. They had uh, a, an episode of All or Nothing where Jason Garrett is talking to the team and he says, "Hey guys, Dez has had a good week." Let's not do anything to mess that up. (laughs) Don't say anything That tells you just how fragile an ego Des Bryant has. Teams are seeing that. Teams are understanding they don't want this guy. They don't want him on their team. Plus, he's a 30-plus-year-old wide receiver who's had a lot of injury history the past couple years and hasn't produced. Whose game is based around hands that he didn't have last season. How many balls did he draw? And that just you in know, a Seattle game. You know, I have, game was a bad thing. I'm all about the bold predictions, particularly in the NFL, and about just weird theories that's that the might happen. That's the last point here, Kieran. That might happen. This could happen. If nobody signs him, which that's a very like 0.5% chance that nobody signs him before the first or second week of the season, you know who is a big fan of signing veterans mid-season after Jets. his... No, 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 no. Not that. I wasn't going to go there. Same division. <laughs> um, I thought maybe because, you know, the Patriots are going to cut a million different people. Dez, I think he might go to the Pats if they make the price Dez, low enough. Dez to the Pats is an interesting They would just have to put a muzzle on him. Bill he can't, he can't say a word. Bill wouldn't take him. <laughs> Bill would I, I have think Bill's to 
handcuff gonna... him to a, a, a trainer, <laughs> like, yeah. you know? I sure. think you. Can, yeah. I think you, it's gonna be like that scene in Infinity War, you know, when uh, spoiler, it's, it's spoiler, at the, it's okay. at the begin. Sorry, it's spoilers. Uh, three. No, two, you don't need to count. One. We've already okay. talked about it. Uh, and you know that scene at the beginning where uh, Thanos has Thor's head and he's got the power gem to it, and I feel like it's gonna let you can fit, you can Photoshop Bill Belichick's face onto a Lombardi trophy, and it's just gonna be like, "Do you want this?" <laughs> and it's just gonna be like Des tied up, like yes. <laughs> All right. Oof. Well, with that, we need to wrap things up. Uh, it's been a very great show. to first yes. show. I've yes. enjoyed it a lot. I'm sure y'all have. Uh, Tristan, tell the people where they can find you on the social webs. Ooh, I, I don't even know where they can find me. Um, what do you use the most? Facebook? Uh, don't say Facebook. I don't use Facebook the most. I don't post a lot in general. Um, I, I really just like to browse. But if you're on the tweeters, um, <laughs> at Willard Tristan, that's one. And then uh, Corn Fritter 15 on the Instagrams. Haven't posted in a couple months. Probably won't in the next couple months. But go check a look, I guess. Uh, He'll be there. Please oh, promote, I'm there. Please promote our show. Uh, Emmett, where can they find you? You probably do use Facebook the most, but that's okay. I I don't use anything very much. That's true. Um, I need to start, uh, start up with the Twitter again. I'm an old man. Um, what is my Twitter? Et cetera, I believe. <laughs> Um, find find the rest of us and you'll find. Are, are yeah. these going to be on our website? <laughs> next uh, yeah. episode. Next episode. I'll I'll have that info up. <laughs> okay, uh, Kieran, yeah. where can they find you, buddy? You can find me on Facebook. On, I don't post very much on that particular. Platform. You can okay. find me in the woods. And I, I was raised <laughs> by wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. All right, what, continue. Uh, less than ten percent. Kieran Gibbs. K I E R A N. G I B B S on Facebook on Twitter I am the Gib Meister don't Ooh. don't hate appreciate sixteen right the, the Gib Meister sixteen spelled M I S T R because I don't know how to spell Meister the Gib so Meister it's the Gib Mister the Mister yes. uh, and uh, I'm just the Gibster on ins- the Gibster sixteen Instagram on fi- on uh on Instagram it's just one B interesting uh, not two Bs and please uh, follow Kieran please follow me and also <laughs> follow me followers he's spelling it out he's and, also, spelling and it also follow my band Radio War yeah. spelled W-O-R-E not W-A-R come out to a show sometimes yeah come out to a show that. if you're in the Denton area we're pretty cool Pretty um. Cool. Thanks for listening. And Cole, you got any last words, bud? Uh, yeah. Uh, you can like follow me on Twitter. Oh, thanks for my hat. I just bought it. I'm checking it out. Yeah. I thought I kind of looked like a, like a mobster gangster or like a cowboy, but I'm not really sure how I am. Right? Kind of like, like nerdy for real. Yeah, maybe. You know, you look like Carl. I saw it in a video and I was like, I want this hat. I sent it to all of y'all. I was Carl like, Hey, what do you feel what? about this hat? But anyways, trying out my hat. I don't know if it looks good. You can tell me later, in private. <laughs> but. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. That's where I am most of the time at POTUS, capital letters, underscore Cole. And then uh, on Instagram, I'm for Cole for President. And then you can find us on our on my production company website. Kieran might have his own later. I don't know about these guys. They don't really do production. That's no. not really I just play the tuba in the but marching band. That is Secondhand Mouse Production. Still with beer. Uh, .wordpress.com. And thank you all for joining us again. Everybody say your goodbyes. Bye. See it was, it was fun talking to all of you.